Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're going to be taking a look at another Instructive Chess Miniatures, a really good book which I recommend for you, for you to get. In this game we're going to be taking a look at the Rui Lopez attack. Well, in this game White's going to be playing the Wormwall variation. If you don't know it, we'll be taking a look at it. And we're going to see how Black creates a very strong attack against it. Here we go. We start off with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5. Here the typical Rui Lopez. Pawn to a6, now we got the Morphe defense. Bishop to a4, knight f6, and here for the warm wall variation, queen to e2. This does not get used very much, and I must say it's not the best Rui Lopez line. That being said, if you're trying to take your pawn out of some standard games of the Rui Lopez, then I definitely recommend this. You can definitely get some good games with it. Be careful against the stronger players and the ones that are prepared. They will definitely try and punish you for the reason why queen e2 is not the best move. Let's see how black does it in this game. Well, let's go and continue standard. Pawn b5 attacking the bishop. Bishop retreats to b3. Bishop to e7. And this is giving you a hint of what's going to be happening later. Typically, black will play the pawn to d6 here. And this may seem like a strange move, but this is a, a nice little strategic trick. A lot of lower rates will fall for this. What... What's the idea of d6? Well, yes, it defends the pawn, but the big idea is that black wants to play the knight to a5 to take on b3 and trap this bishop. Now, this bishop is very important in the Rui Lopez because, well, it's going to help out with the kingside attack. And typically, whenever you're playing the Rui Lopez as white, you're going to be going for central control to keep it closed and then go for a kingside attack. While black is going to try and open up the center and then go for queenside attack, or even kingside if, if it allows. Well, Back to the game, bishop b7 gets played, and this is how you kind of know that black is looking at looking at martial attacking ideas. So white continues with pawn c3, castles, castles, and here we go, martial attacking ideas against the wormhole, pawn to d5. White to move, what do you play here to win the marshal's pawn? Okay, we're going to go ahead and take on d5. Knight takes on d5, and it is the e pawn that is hanging here, so knight takes on e5 right away. Now, this is definitely one of those gambit pawns because even though it may look like just a mistake, black gets enormous compensation in this game by giving away the e pawn. Now, black gets a very strong attack. In fact, a lot of times, white is just defending for like a good 10 to 15 moves of just theory just to try and keep it up. That being said, at the highest level, white will typically get a draw or even a win in these lines, but it is so bothersome to take this pawn, especially if you're playing a fast game, that most people will not want to do this. Especially for those Rui Lopez players that would rather give up a pawn and then actually have an attack. I will tell you, I would be one of them. Alright, so the game continues. Well, the standard move here would be knight takes on e5. Ah, but that doesn't seem like the strongest here. Here there's a very nice move to get a free tempo. Although the queen uh, coming out early can help win material, she's also very vulnerable. The little pieces can attack her. Black to move. What do you play here? Let's start moving in our pieces closer. Knight f4. Good job. Of course, this is where this, the knight goes on f4, attacking the queen on e2. The queen goes ahead and moves. Queen to e4. Makes a lot of sense. The queen over here is attacking the knight on f4, which is undefended. Also, attack the knight, but also put in a pin because the rook on a8 is undefended. And, well, it looks like white's just winning here. Well, black definitely had an idea against this and goes ahead and plays. Knight takes on e5. Three pieces undefended. This is going to be hard for white to uh, navigate these muddy waters because, well, when you have so many choices, it's really hard to find one idea and then go down the path. There's always a little something back in your mind saying, maybe I should have gone this way or I, I don't know what to do here. Well, unfortunately for white, they chose the uh, a losing move here. With that being said, the winning move or the best move by computer is saying play d4. And I'm not sure if I have enough strength to play that myself. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> All right, with that being said, this queen definitely needs to take back a piece or we're just going to be down a piece. So what do they play? Hmm. Well, here in the game, take uh, queen took the rook, and the game was lost immediately. Let's take a look about other ideas here. I mean, why not take one of these knights? If you take one of the knights, the game does become a bit hard anyways. After, let's say, queen takes on f4, well, you see this d3 square is really weak, and black just gets a very nice game after knight to d3. It's not so much that the knight's so strong, although that does help out quite a bit. It's just that the d-pawn can't move. Why is it important? Well, if the d-pawn can't move, the bishop can't move. 
if the bishop can't move, that means the rook can't move. The only thing that really can get out here is the knight. So this would just be a huge positional plus, and black is already in a better position. Ugh, that's why you have to find this crazy looking pawn, the d4 move. That's how important it is to get this bishop out. All right, well, white said, you know what? Give me this free rook over here, and I'll just try and withstand your attack. I, I mean, I, I don't see anything, obviously, right? All right, black to move. The beautiful combination begins. What are some good moves here? Granted, this is already a winning position. With that being said, it's negative 10. So it's basically saying we're up a queen here, even though we just lost a rook. There's so much attacking potential here. There's so many good moves. It's really up to you as the chess player to find out which move is the best. Again, the stronger you are, the, the better moves you'll find as far as winning faster. So try to find a winning line if you can. I do encourage you to push pause here. All right, hopefully you found some good ideas here. What did you think of? Well, we definitely see the queens undefended. And, well, we have some ideas about discoveries, but first we're going to have to move this queen. So where do you find, where do you move this queen to jump into the attack? Hopefully you found it. This was a weak square and another variation. It's a weak square in this variation. Some of the same ideas will work because, well, a weak square in any variation is weak in every variation. And here we're going to go ahead and play. Queen to d3, a beautiful move here. Not only does the queen get ready to stop the d-pawn from being moved, again, bishop can't get out, rook can't get out, but it's also letting discovery attacking ideas now with this bishop. Anytime this bishop moves, the rook will be attacking the queen. And you can just see these knights, these bishops are kind of aimed over there. Yeah, if I'm playing white here, I am not too happy. All my moves are just going away. In fact, right now, there's a simple threat, a black playing knight e2 check, king h1, Knight g3 check, and we will win the rook there. There's nothing they can do about that. White has to fight against this idea, and knight e2 check is being threatened, so bishop 2 d1 gets played. So now if you do that check, I'll just go ahead and take it. And now, well, hopefully you can find this move. It's black to move again, and what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and develop this bishop and develop with a threat. What do we do? All right, hopefully you find the best way to bring this bishop into the game. The bishop goes ahead and goes to h3. There's other good places for the bishop, but I would say bishop h3 makes the most sense. Here you can see with the discovery, we're putting pressure on g2. And you can see with the knight, the bishop, oh my gosh, the pile up just be begins. Uh, well, white did not want to lose their queen, so queen takes on a6, and now this is just a forced checkmate. To be honest, there was a forced checkmate before this, but that was like a 9 or 10 one, which is... You know, maybe most people find this, a, a computer definitely will, but I would say the checkmate here is not too hard to find for black for a human. So feel free to, feel free if you want to, again, push pause, look for the checkmate, it is checkmate in five here. That's if they play the best moves. All right, here we go. Let's get this checkmate going. Bishop takes on g2, of course. Here, white, uh, white is worried about queen takes on f1 for checkmate, so what do we do? Well, there's only one really logical move, rook to e1. And here is the move that's hard to foresee. Black to move. What do you play here to get a very nice checkmate in four? Oh, this is so beautiful. Queen to f3 gets played. And yes, bishop can take on f3. Eh, you know, a little self-destructive. Knight takes f3 is going to be checkmate. How many times do you get to do these beautiful queen sacrifices? Um, and the real threat is just to play the simple knight to h3 check and mate. There's nothing really to stop this threat. I mean, uh, at this point in the game, white just went ahead and resigned. But let's look at a few ideas of trying to escape and not being able to. What else can we do here? So knight h3 checkmate is the idea. So how about we give a free space for the king to run to, as there's no other free spaces we can go to. What about this h4 move? Eh, it doesn't work, sorry. Knight h3 check, king h2, knight to g4 check and mate. And it looks so beautiful as you can see all the pieces around the king. Um, is there any other good way to try and get out of this? There really doesn't look like any. That's why um, white just goes ahead and throws in the towel. Computer's giving queen to e6. That's how bad this position is, just trying to guard that h3 square. Well, hope you enjoyed this game. We'll see you in the next one.